Hi everyone, this is Paolo from the MB Academy and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make basses like the ones in the track Hear Me by Matthews. So this is the original track. Is this not and this is my recreation. But before you get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any future videos. And if you want to support the channel, consider grabbing one of our products at dmbacademy.com. We have crazy preset packs. We have producer bundles made by pro artists like Icicle, Current Value, Avis, Mastic, and many more. Showing you how to make tracks from start to finish with all project files, presets, samples, etc. included. And speaking about samples and presets, if you want the ones from this video, consider joining Preset Pass. The link is also in the description. So, with all that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, cool. So as you can see, this bass is separated into two main layers. We have a main reese. And then we have a harmonics layer. And then both of these go into a main bass channel. and then get saturated together. Cool, so we're gonna be making this first one and then the second one, and then I'm gonna show you the processing and the whole mindset behind making a sound like this. So, let's get into it. Okay, so for the first main uh, race layer, we're gonna be playing this note. You can copy them if you want to follow along with the video. So now let's get into phase plan. And so here I'm gonna start talking about the process and the overall mindset for creating a sound like this. So this types of sounds that have a very rich harmony in them, how I like to approach them is I like to saturate a main bass that is gonna be playing the root note. Uh, in this case, it's a reese. And then choosing waveforms to play those upper harmonics and play that melody that then are going to be glued together by a group processing that is going to be a distortion. So in this case, I chose face plant because I can use more oscillators than in Serum. And this allows me to specifically choose, okay, this is this harmonic and this is that other harmonic. So first, let's just uh, create the main reese. So for this, the, the workflow is very simple, which is going to be using two saw waves. We're going to be detuning them 20 cents away from each other. Then we're going to be adding a main sub in between them. It, it doesn't have to be in between. <laughs> um, like this. Cool. And then we're just going to add a noise oscillator here. And a filter. And this noise is going to go on top of everything. Uh, and the filter before. Uh, this does matter because this is the order that we're going to be uh, sending the signals into the output module. And we don't want to filter everything, we just want to filter the noise. So this noise, I'm going to bring it down to 0% um, for now, and then later we're going to revisit this. Cool. So this is it. This is this is, this is the reason. <laughs> it doesn't sound very interesting right now. But now uh, we're going to be using a very fun workflow that I like to always use. Uh, which is using EQing before distortion. So I'm going to boost the distortion here a lot and set it on saturate. And as you can hear, it's taking this up. But watch what we're going to be doing with this EQ. We're going to be um, boosting the second harmonic and then bringing down something like the sub. So when we do this, we are changing how the signal that is coming into the distortion is uh, laid out in terms of harmonics. And the more saturation, the more distortion that you add after that EQ, the more this EQ is going to be relevant in terms of changing the, the texture of the sound. So next what we're going to do is we're going to do a very um, fun thing that I did in um, Multipass. Uh, not OTT, but 
Uh, we're going to try to remake Trash 2 <laughs> here. And the reason why I'm not using Trash 2 is because when I was making the sound, I wanted to keep everything in face plan. Um, so we're going to be copying the Trash 2's uh, split. So I think Trash 2 splits at 160 and then it splits at 3.5. So this is the split of Trash 2. <laughs> and then we're just going to be saturating um, each band separately uh, in a different way. I'm gonna boost the drive on this one. I'm gonna bring the drive on the sub a lot. And then later we can just change the crossover here. And so yeah, this was my <laughs> tiny emulation of uh, Trash 2 in Multipass. And then after that, we have an EQ. We have to boost again uh, one harmonic, in this case I chose um, the second harmonic, this one right here. And then we're just going to bring this saturation uh, once more. So you can hear the very simple reese it has become very, very, very strong. Uh, and so now we can just go back into this EQ. And just change some things, right? depending on how clean or distorted do we want the wrist to be. Cool. And now let's jump into the post-processing of this. So for the post-processing here, I have boosted the sub and reduced the highs, something that looks a bit weird for this type of bass. And it's, on, it's honestly a little bit of a meme um, EQ because you're not supposed to just EQ things like that. But the purpose of this was not to treat this as an individual sound. Let me just delete my reference here. It was more um, to distort this as much as possible before soft clipping this. So listen to how this sound sounds before the EQ. It's clipping a lot coming into the plugins. Then we boost this up even more. And it sounds very saturated, of course, because it is. Um, but in terms of like how the sub is eating the frequencies above it, and it's sick. I love that sound. It's so good. Uh, in the original track by Memphis, you can hear that a lot. And it's insane how well he is able to achieve that effect. So amazing. Big up Memphis for doing that. Um, it's such an amazing sound. And then what I'm trying to do with this is I'm trying to emulate that same thing. And then I'm soft clipping this. So you can hear the mess that that creates, like that very saturated sound. Once you soft clip it, it becomes very messy, uh, but it has a lot of movement. And so that was what I wanted to achieve with this. And we can just go back and now change things in this EQ. And as you can see, it just gives us lots and lots and lots of movements here. Uh, and we can even try and put something like, let's say we come here, we bring this EQ a little bit to um, the normal level, <laughs> if that's what we consider normal. And then if we, if we hear this, It is very saturated, but now we can just bring that down and saturate that and bring it up. And that's a way that we can saturate it even more. In this case, I chose to just soft clip it. Soft clip a very clip signal going into the saturator. And we can always just reduce that. But in this case, I really wanted that saturated feel. Ooh, 
Why? Because we're gonna be distorting that with a very harmonic layer. So now let's get into making this one. Okay, so for the other patch, these are the notes that we're gonna be playing. As you can hear, just using a saw whip, it already sounds like Matthew's track, and that is because it's his harmony, you know? Um, you gotta give it to Matthews for doing um, this really cool arrangement because this is what is going to simplify a lot of the sound sign process for this layer thanks to having this harmony. So how this harmony works is it's doing the same things that the Reese is doing in the low end, but in the high end, we are playing the fifth of what this first note is, which is um, B to E. Then we're going up to F sharp and then A sharp, which will be a major third. And then going to G and going back to B, which now it's a major third of G, which is very interesting because uh, that adds a very cool feel um, to the harmony of this track because we're going from just fifth to major third to major third, e even if we're going kind of chromatic ascending. It's really, really, really cool. And again, the reason why this sounds good or it's gonna sound good in terms of like the sound sign is because Matthews chose a really nice harmony. So now let's jump into Faceplan. And so here in Faceplan, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna be stacking um, a lot of different saw waves that have cool movements. So we're gonna be adding some unison here into this saw wave. Let's bring it to three voices and let's tune this a little bit less. So there's kind of like a flanger type of effect in the top end. If we bring a, an EQ here, let me put this on exact. You can see like this um, high frequency is kind of wobbling. Like they have like a wavy pattern. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna double down on that effect. So let's actually get a um, filter here. Let's turn off this and let's add a saw wave here. So if we if we slightly detune this saw wave, we get that waviness. And I think that's such a cool effect. Uh, and if we do this very, very slightly, like, I don't know, two cents. As you can see, we get that uh, facing effect that is very cool. And if we layer that, we get a very nice laser effect. So um, definitely very, very interesting movement. It's something that you get a feel for the more you do sounds like this and the more you play with uh, facing and all those things. Now we're just gonna be adding a simple uh, sign with to play the bass. And then we're going to add an EQ that is gonna boost the mids. Because that's where the meat of the sound is. And then we're gonna be saturating this with the with that mids uh, boost. Woof, very cool. And then we're gonna be making a meme, <laughs> the audio engineer shit posting type of EQ, something like this. Uh, because we want to boost the lows and the highs a lot. And in my defense, I'm not mixing this sound. Um, we are, again, trying to get this very saturated, trying to get as much harmonics as possible from this sound. So then we can soft clip it and then layer it with the other sound. Okay, cool. So now let's just add a limiter. And again, uh, we can limit it here. But as you can hear, it's a little bit too transparent and we don't want that, even if it sounds weird, because in the post-processing, let me delete my reference here, because in the post-processing, we're going to be soft clipping it with Ableton Saturator. It's very subtle, but it does have a different sound, especially if you pay attention to the very, very high end. It just kind of brings that down a little bit. Cool, so the EQ here uh, before that saturator is boosting this up even more and the highs even more. Even though everything is clipping, this it's like 
EQing before saturation, which is happening here. Uh, and then we are removing all this up there. And then we get this sound, which has a very, very strong uh, harmonic there. And we can see the movement that I was talking about in phase blank here. Very, very nice movement. And now we're going to be layering these two sounds. Going into this group. So what this group is, is we have a boost on the highs. Let me just get rid of all of this. We just have boost in the highs. And then here we remove everything from the sub, like all of the stereo information. And here we just boost the sides, which we actually don't have anything. And that is because we have to go here into the face plan and bring the spread up. And we can even add something like a chorus here. Now you can hear the um, stereo information here. Now, if I move this around, you're going to see why we're doing such a big boost. So you can hear uh, the movement that is happening here. Um, and why we're boosting the sides so much. Cool. Then we have the regular wider bass uh, rack that I always show in almost every video. Uh, but in this case, we only have chorus, a wider which is 200%, and then the high pass. And then that gets layered with uh, the same dry version, passed through a vocoder, that is noise. We boost the format up, and we high pass that. We layer that with the stereo, and then that goes uh, to the dry signal. And everything gets soft clipped once more. And that's it. It's just making it sound a little bit wider and brighter. Cool. And soft clipping everything together. So cool. That's it. That's the sound. And bam. That's how you make basses like the ones in the track. Hear Me by Matthews. Such an insane sound. Very cool. And as you can see, it's just a very unique process to create uh, basses like this mainly because of all the saturation workflow, all the harmonies that you have to think about when you're making the sounds, the interactions between the two layers and all of those things. It's, it's really, really cool. Now, I know it's not exactly the same, but I think it's very, very cool to see uh, an attempt at recreating this sound because it teaches us uh, many cool things about how sound works inside uh, of things like Faceplan and going through processing chains of Ableton and all of those things. So yeah, if you liked the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any of future videos. And if you want to support the channel, consider grabbing one of our products at dmbacademy.com. We have crazy preset packs. We have producer bundles made by pro artists like Icicle, Current Value, Avis, Mastic, and many more, showing you how to make tracks from start to finish with all project files, presets, samples, etc. included. And speaking about samples and presets, if you want the ones from this video, consider joining Preset Pass. The link is also in the description. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.